So we talked about the, the simple model of a neural network and a neuron. Um, what um, what this will entail on in the, uh, neural a neuron is a single single entity that does uh, some kind of a small operation. For example, it will take these inputs, they had them mul multiply by and weight, add them all together, and then it will send them to a nonlinear operation to get an output. Um, now, um, a single neuron might uh, not be able to do too much because it will only add all these things and go through a nonlinearity. Um, but uh, what makes the neural network very powerful, and uh, neural networks are usually called uh, um, general function approximator or universal function approximator, because basically um, if you put all these networks in a mul multi-layer system, they will be able to approximate as much as you know, the precision that you want, any kind of function. So if you recall, uh, that's exactly what we wanted. We wanted uh, something that will take a bunch of inputs, you know, 100 by 100 by 3 inputs, and will uh, can approximate any kind of a weird function that will tell us that in this box there's a plane, or an animal, or a car, or a human. So that's exactly what we want. So if we can take a single neuron and we can uh, put them in, in multiple layers, you know, where, uh, for example, this input input layer is the number of pixels that we want, so there's like 30,000 inputs in here. Um, they will be connected to some neurons in a hidden layer, um, and then we will have um, a second hidden layer third, and so forth, up to an output then we can be able to approximate the function that we are in very interested in in vision as well. Um, so uh, this is a simple neural network. How many neurons you have here in each layer and how they are connected to each other, that's called the architecture of the network. So single neuron make neural network with a specific architecture. Uh, this will implement certain functions and in order to implement certain functions that you want you will have to use learning techniques that uh, take data possibly examples that you have and uh, and really show them um, what are the pros and cons of neural networks uh, well uh, neural network are fairly large and sophisticated machines uh, on one side, they're easy because they're just composed to an aggregate of neurons like this. On the other side, the architecture, having multiple layers that define different connections, makes them more <coughs> complicated to, to deal with and to think about. On the other hand, they have extreme uh, advantages. So, for example, they're a uh, universal uh, function approximator, and that allows them to um, really be able to do the kind of things we want. Also the fact that we have neurons in our brains and our brain is uh, the only one capable of these really great visual feats that we are not even aware of most, most of the times can tell you that mm, neural networks is most probably the way to go. Um, in this course, as I said before, um, I wanted to remind you that the neural network is just one of the possible machine learning techniques. There are different other machine learning techniques mm, that do similar things. Um, we're not really interested uh, to study all of them in this course because we're interested in biological inspired model and neural networks will do. Also, many of these things are quite similar. They produce similar results. Some of them might have slight uh, more or better advantages um, but that's beyond the purpose of this course if you're interested in this kind of things you should take a machine learning course or advanced statistic in machine learning and learn all the possible techniques uh, if you want to compare them and so forth um, I really truly believe that uh, neural network is all that one needs uh, because as you can see with our cells we are able to make very complex intelligent choices sometimes um, with our brain and our brain is just composed of neural networks so it must be a way to replicate this uh, in, uh, in software so 
Now I'm gonna start, take some of <coughs> the slide from Andrew Eng in his class, Machine Learning. Uh, the first time that it was offered, he had uh, this uh, link. Now it's a co one of the Coursera uh, courses, but this link also still works. So you uh, are welcome to look at it there. I really recommend you uh, listen to Andrew Eng's explanation of neural networks and up maybe up to the neural networks because he would really, really help you with this course and a lot of things. Um, and it's really, a really well developed course. So, um, if Andrew doesn't ma mind, I'll borrow some of his slides and, and use them. So, let's look at our uh, neuron. Um, it's also sometimes called the logistic unit uh, in, in terms of statistics. So, um, the neuron that we're going to use is similar to the previous diagram that I showed. Uh, it will have a bunch of inputs. Uh, all these inputs are multiplied by a uh, by, by a weight uh, phi. Uh, there's a if you want to think of them as a vector, there's an input vector and there's a weight vector. Okay. Uh, there's uh, beside the input there is sometimes a bias unit uh, x zero um, where x of zero is always one. So the you can think of it as an extra input where the input is always one and adds a sort of biases, adds uh, importance to this uh, uh, this neuron. Uh, some models use it, some models don't. Um, we'll see later. You will go into this neuron, so all the values like x will be multiplied by this, and then we will go into a nonlinear function. Uh, this nonlinear function can be um, really anything, but usually you want something that can be integrated because uh, um, you want to compute gradients, you might want to be able to compute the derivative of that function. So, as we will see later, a lot of people use a sigmoid function. Um, the sigmoid is um, 1 divided by 1 plus e to the minus c. And what the sigmoid basically means is that uh, if uh, your value is, uh, is 0, if the input, the sum of all these input multiplied by the weight is zero, will give you zero, uh, and then it will be fairly linear for a little bit, and then it will become nonlinear, saturate around one. So, as uh, the num, you know, this input, the sum of all the inputs multiplied by the weight becomes bigger and bigger. Everything saturates to one, um, and if they become much smaller than uh, then 0, you know, minus 10, minus 20, minus 50, then it saturates to minus 1. So that's basically the activation function of the neural network, nonlinear operation or um, sigmoid function. Um, so if you want to think of uh, uh, as an entire neural network, uh, we can use an example like this where uh, we have three layers so layer 1, layer 2, and layer 3. So layer 1 is really the input layer. So here you're just going to put the values of the input. Uh, you're not going to do any computation right here. Uh, what you're going to do is you're, you're going to define how things are connected to the next layer. And then you have a bunch of neurons. In this case, they're fully connected. So each neuron is connected to every other neuron. Sometimes you might not want to do that. Um, because you want certain inputs to be connected to some neurons and so forth, but we will see about that later. Um, and then at the out, um, this will be the second layer. So the sum of all these input multiplies by the weight and through the nonlinearity that will give you some kind of output. This will be the out. This output will be the output of the second layer. Uh, you can then uh, take all the inputs, all the outputs of the second layer, and use them with a proper way to, to generate um, uh, layer free value. So in this case, every neuron multiplied by a weight and uh, um, added together and going through nonlinearity and that will be the, the output of this network, for example. So this is a simple network. So think of it as uh, uh, these are the value of pixel. There could be 30 thousands of them and uh, you want to decide at the end uh, if the, there's a face or no face there or if there's a plane or no plane there.
So we can also express, like Andrew Eng does in his course, we can also express um, the output of um, this network um, with a vectorized notation, and that will help programming uh, neural network and making them very efficient in terms of computation. Um, so you can think of it as uh, every neuron A1, so this is uh, N1 with um, up, upper script 2, so this is the layer script. This is uh, the last A3, so the last la layer 3 neuron. So every neuron there will be, for every layer, there will be multiple, like in this case there's three. <coughs> what they do is they take uh, a certain a value certain value of the weight, so uh, x0, which is the bias term, is multiplied by a certain weight, and then x1 is multiplied by another weight, and x2 by another weight, and so forth. So they're all added together, uh, and then they go from this nonlinearity g, which is, uh, as we saw before, is the sigmoid logistic activation. Um, you do the same for uh, the second neuron is the sum of all the inputs, uh, and the third neuron, in this case, they all are fully connected, so you get all the inputs, but if you're not fully connected, you would have only some of these values. As you can see, this forms some kind of a matrix, um, and this is matrix is uh, matrix phi of the weights, and it's 3 by 4. Uh, and then, so this, this matrix is the matrix of sort of connection. Um, connectivity matrix and weight matrix uh, between the first and the second layer. Uh, this, the, this, the third layer will be the output basically, and there's just one neuron there. So again, it will take uh, all the three outputs from the previous layer plus uh, a bias term A0 multiplied by another vector. So you will have a second matrix. So there's one matrix in here, uh, V of layer 1, that is 3 by 4, and then there's a second la layer matrix here that is um, uh, basically 1 by 4. So if the network has uh, SJ unit in layer J, SJ plus 1 unit in layer J plus 1, then you know, like in this case, uh, uh, the weight matrix will be Sj plus 1 by Sj plus 1 of size. So, uh, you don't have to have just uh, one hidden layer, you can have multiple hidden layers. So, there's many different kind of architectures on your network. Uh, for example, Look at this architecture, it's similar to before in the first layer, and the second layer uh, is also fully connected. It has an extra second layer where there's two more neurons, and then there's an output neuron in here. So different kind of architectures um, will decide how many weights you, you're going to use, how many computation. And that architecture really depends on how many steps and, and, uh, and, and things you want. Um, for images, uh, because the inputs are so big, uh, ideally you would want to have, you know, many steps to really find uh, every possible function, every possible object. When in reality, sometimes it's hard to to train to have example for all these uh, um, for all these weights, being able to train all these weights. Um, so, um, and then it's not very well understood how the capacity of a network trades with the, with the size and uh, for a specific task. It's usually kind of a heuristic. You have to do a trial and error a little bit, and you have to have some experience about these things um, on how yeah, you're basically going to do this. Lastly, uh, what I wanted to say is uh, uh, before we close this, uh, this portion of the lecture is that um, if um, if you wanted to detect multiple output, for example, a categorization task where you want to detect a pedestrian or a car or a motorcycle or a truck, um, then what you end up doing is uh, you end up having multiple 
uh, output functions, multiple uh, output neurons, and each one of these neurons really uh, uses uh, this, uh, this, this version of the, um, this representation to compute the post something possible. So maybe you want, if it's a pedestrian, you want uh, you know, this unit to be one and everybody's zero, and if it, when it's a car, you want this one to be one and everybody's zero, and so forth. Um, it's like a one hot encoding. And that's one of the possibilities of uh, setting up a, a large neural network that has four outputs.